Hi folks, my name is Darren Gertis. I'm just a professor trying to give you context so that you can understand what's happening in the war in Ukraine. For a long time, I've argued that you need to listen to the other side. You need to understand what they're saying. You might not like it, but at least you can see it clearly. Now, this can be somewhat infuriating, especially when you're listening to uh, Doug McGregor or Scott Ritter just parrot Russian talking points that are clearly Russian talking points. But at least you understand that they are Russian talking points if you paid attention to the other side. Now, we're going to watch a video from about the turn of the new year just a few days ago, about a week and a half ago. Uh, this is Armin Gasparian, uh, and he's talking about how he thinks about Ukrainians. I want you to listen carefully because you hear this narrative, you hear mixed narratives. It's almost schizophrenic. Yes, these Ukrainians are all bad. They're all Nazis or they're all our brothers and they just wandered away and there's really, they're really Russians. There's no difference in, they have this weird political identity, but they're really Russians. So, so we need to restore them and bring them back into the fold under mother Russia. But I want you to hear what this guy's saying, like what he's actually saying in his video. Um, he's a lesser known figure on RT to us, uh, but he's a very established author. Let me show you this. This is his Wikipedia page. He's the author of books intended for the general public about the history of Russia. So this is the guy that's telling them what their own history is, including one of the authors of the history book, Russian History for Students in 10th grade. Okay, keep that in mind as you're listening to it. And then these are other books that he's published, right? He, he's been pretty prolific. Okay, with that as a backdrop, let's listen to what he has to say. Okay, this is the last broadcast of the year for the program Gasparian on Solioff Live, the main patriotic TV channel in the country. Subscribe to us, friends. We sent the coming New Year's greetings to the village. The village? What does he mean by the village? With a volume of flatulence. So he's, okay, he's a metaphor. They may soon become the main exporter of gas. There is so much crying. Whoa. Mostly important, it's all done in Russian. Okay, so he's talking about Ukraine and that they're bombing Ukraine and they're crying about it. And they're crying about it in Russian. But you're not supposed to be speaking Russian. You're Ukrainians after all. And isn't it, aren't you, don't, don't you hate the Russian language? Okay. I'm just amazed by that. Of course, when things are flying and landing on you, you'll be yelling mama in your native language. Well, that's charming. That's caring. This is how you should be talking to people that are your brothers that are that are essentially the same people as you or aren't they which, which is it you won't recall the rules of the ukrainian language i'm amazed by something else why are all of you screaming in russian on telegram aren't you lice subject to official language laws like he's got a real big burr under his saddle about the language laws which russians imposed when they took over ukraine and then when the ukrainians as ukrainians decided you know we really don't want this now you're crying about it like i i, I don't understand why this is such a poke in your eye people used before the war people used russian just as fluidly as ukrainian but after an invasion, you can tell why they might not like you. You walk around in embroidered shirts with trident. Hollering the Ukrainian national anthem like crazy. But as soon as something happens, you speak Russian language without any accent. Yes, I understand that it is scary. I understand that you didn't expect this. Many all at once. Now, he's talking in the context of it's about New Year's Eve or so, and they just had the largest missile attack and missiles and drones and whatever that was ever launched on Ukraine just a day or two before this. Who else will take care of you, goats? Now, very often when you're dehumanizing others, 
uh, like think about the reason for it. I understand when Ukrainians call Russian invaders orcs as a metaphor for the uh, Lord of the Rings. It, it makes sense when these are the invading forces. How did Ukraine so offend you before this war? That, that's what I'm trying to understand. What did Ukraine do that was so deeply offensive that you need to call them lice and goats and whatever other uh, slurs that you can come up with? This is a lot of Muscovite, a slur. This is a lot of a Muscovite, a slur for Russian. Take care of you. This is a lot of a Muscovite, which is a slur for Russian. Okay, and it, it kind of is a slur for Russian. In, except it's not. Moscovite is not necessarily the a wrong usage, but they take deep offense at it because it only reduces them to Moscow rather than all of what was Rus, which Ukraine kind of had as much of a claim to as Moscow did, and they kind of adopted that. To take care of you, blanks. Like, what's the name calling about? Because you aren't capable of it on your own? On your own, you can just lift up your head and howl. Like a wolf to the moon. Using 100% of Russian curse words. Your fate is merciless. It's true. Fate truly is merciless toward you. Do you know why? Fate loves those who are prepared and not imbeciles. Okay, so they're lice, they're goats, they're uh, illegitimate children, they are imbeciles. <laughs> like, why all the... And, and much of this is because... And they speak Russian language in spite of... The, why do you have such an issue with that? Okay. If you're already in the position of being secondary... And from a Russian perspective, they are certainly secondary. They're either little Russians or they're the borderlands or those kind of things. Get used to loving pain. Wow. It is a useful ability. This is what life is like. What did you want? Life is full of negativity. You chose this path. You could have been like people. You chose this. You chose this path. You could have been like people. But this is exactly what you wanted. Okay, wait a minute. They chose this path. Russia does a lot of blaming Ukraine for what it chose to do by invading because Ukraine wasn't doing exactly what Russia wanted. But that doesn't mean that Ukraine chose this path. There's two parts of this. Who else is at fault for this but yourselves? Mm, you, Russia. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty easy. Also, you should pray. But in a correct church and not in the Ukrainian. But in a correct church, not a Ukrainian Orthodox one. Pray for the health of the president of Russia. Well, I'm pretty sure that Ukrainians are praying for the health of the president of Russia, but not the way that you think about it. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. Because Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin is very humane. Now, he's saying this on the heels of the largest missile strike ever since the war began. And he's saying he's very, Ukra uh, he's very humane. You can't begin to imagine what would happen. If we had another president who is not a humanitarian, I think they'll take that chance if they're given the opportunity. How many and how often would you fl would fly at your How many and how often would fly at your clueless heads? What is the real attitude 
What is the real attitude toward you? You cannot even imagine this. I'm pretty sure Ukrainians can imagine this. I mean, when pretty much everyone knows somebody who has suffered, died, uh, been wounded, something in the war, I, I'm pretty sure they can imagine it. At first, you were pitied. Then you were looked at with disbelief by the Russians. Then with half disdain. Then with total disdain. Now you're not considered at all. Oh, but you're doing a lot of considering for somebody who's not considering them at all. As a matter of principle, because your humanity is gone. Again, the attacks on their humanity, that they're lice, that they're goats, that they're illegitimate children, that they're not human, that their humanity is gone. Why? Why such disdain? In front of you, there are millions of people. Who cannot comprehend the changed reality. Or anything at all. The latest poll shows that 81% of the villagers, now villagers, he's talking about the Ukrainians on the borderland, trust their government. Listen, what do you call this? This is 81% of whom? How do you like your new reality? Is it all good? They say, if you make a New Year's wish, everything always comes true. All of it comes to be. Every year I wish you only one thing. Line up in columns or files of 8 or 88. I couldn't care less. All of you march together in search of what was beaten out of your heads on Maidan. No, not brains. Now, what's interesting here is that Maidan and the Maidan Revolution looms so large in Russia's thinking. Ukraine is not Russia. And the Ukrainians have chosen... Now, Ukraine is not Russia, and Ukrainians have chosen a different path not to be fully aligned with Russia, and Maidan is actually scary for them. I'm not sure which is the greater threat. And I know some people will say NATO, certainly, but I think integration into the European Union is a very significant threat to Russia when Ukraine is integrating into the European Union because they're no longer under their sphere, under their orbit, under their control. And this is a real, really scary thing for the Russians. What was beaten out of your head? No, not brains. You've been born without them. Searching for elements of self-preservation. The owners will return and restore the subways. The owners will do all sorts of things. There is only one thing the owners can't do. The owners can't turn you into people. So I'm, I'm imagining the owners by that he means the Russians. Uh, now, a lot of people are saying in the recent weeks, uh, maybe a little over a month now, well, you know, maybe Ukraine should be suing for peace. How do you sue for peace when that is the perspective that your opponent has toward you? Now, it's not just his perspective, although he's written dozens of books about Russian history. 
he's on RT. This is state sanctioned that he's on there saying this kind of thing. And if you think you can sit down and negotiate peace with somebody who doesn't think that you are human, calls you lice, a goat, less than human, where's your humanity? You're not even people. How do you negotiate peace with that? Unless you want to negotiate slavery. And Ukrainians are not willing to do that. Tell me what you thought about this broadcast and, and what you think about the Russian understanding of Ukrainians. I'm curious about your thoughts. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.